Welcome back to Fresh Food Therapy. Today is going to be a fun one. I don't know about you, but I love breakfast and I specifically love lazy days. I know a bunch of you out there are probably big fans of brunch, but what you can do at home is to make a brunch that really, really satisfies and is quick, easy, clean, and will make people think that you're a culinary genius. Now, this is called the mini tribal brunch. Um, it's a little bit of a Hawaiian themed brunch. Um, it's very, very quick and there isn't a lot to do for it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through, uh, starting out with making a little bit of fried rice. And then once we make the fried rice, we're going to very rapidly put this brunch together. And I think you're gonna find that this is now one of your winning meals. So let's say that you came home from having Chinese dinner and there is some fried rice left. This is the perfect idea for this breakfast because you literally have no real startup work. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're gonna teach you how to make the fried rice so that we have it on hand. Fried rice is very, very simple. It's literally just taking leftover rice that's cool, frying it up with some vegetables and some small forms of meat, um, whatever you happen to have on hand, uh, and then adding a little bit of seasoning to it and it's done. So just an episode ago, we made some stir fry and we have vegetables left over. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, rather than start all over again, we're gonna take what we have on hand. I have some fresh mushrooms, I have some onions, I have some red and yellow bell pepper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just mincing up. You're gonna wanna keep the pieces small because if you keep the pieces small, they will spread evenly through the fried rice and you'll get color and you'll get uh, texture. So we're mincing up the, the peppers and you just want them about the size of a, of a piece of minced onion. It really doesn't take much. And what you're gonna do is you're going to try and use up any onion that you have left over from any other recipe within a day or two because it tends to wilt and go bad quickly. Fried rice is an excellent way to get rid of a little bit of leftover onion. So once again, you just trim the stem of the, the mushroom, cut the mushroom in half, and you're good. When you're making fried rice, uh, one component that's very, very important is having a little bit of fried egg. It not only adds protein to the dish, but it also adds color and texture and flavor. So what I'm gonna do is, of the 12 eggs that we have for this brunch, we're gonna take two eggs, and we're gonna use those to make the scrambled eggs. It's really as simple as taking the two eggs, putting them in a bowl, and just scrambling them right up. Now, if you like your eggs to be fluffy, you can add water. If you like your eggs to be more creamy and rich, you can add milk. But in this case, we're just gonna scramble the eggs and fry them exactly as they are. So I've got the cooktop in front of me. I'm gonna just put a little bit of Pam as a nonstick uh, for, the, for the dish. And within a few moments, it's already frying up quite nicely. It'll be ready to go within, I would say, a minute and a half is all it's gonna really take you to make the scrambled eggs for the fried rice. You do wanna make sure that they're fried all the way through, but you wanna keep them relatively soft because they're gonna continue to cook in the in the rice. Once they're cooked all the way through, it's very easy for you to just grab them and put them with the rest of the ingredients for the fried rice. The 
There you go. And now we can go into the kitchen and make the fried rice. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make that fried rice because we didn't have any leftovers from the night before. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wok pan, or you can use a nonstick fry pan if you wish, and we're gonna put a little bit of oil into it. And then we're gonna turn it on. And we're gonna turn it on a medium heat. We're gonna let the oil get hot. And while it's starting to heat up, we're gonna make sure that the oil coats the entire pan. Let it roll around a little bit. Make sure that it, it covers up to the edge where the rice is gonna to touch. And then, very simply, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the garlic. You did mince a little bit of garlic. You didn't see it in the first part. But I will be honest, garlic adds a great deal of flavor and, and depth to the dish. You don't wanna miss out on, on garlic for the, uh, for the fried rice. Now we're gonna add, well, the garlic is just starting. The onions. and the peppers. Now traditionally, fried rice is a dish that is used in many Asian countries specifically to get rid of rice that was left over from the family meal the night before and a way to get rid of leftovers and odds and ends that are in your refrigerator. You can use little bits of meat, you can use little pieces of vegetable, uh, Anything literally that's, that's left over that will add a little bit of flavor will make a incredibly diverse, uh, an incredibly delicious and savory fried rice. So we've got the, the vegetables frying up a little bit. It doesn't require very, very much time. And if you're comfortable, you can actually increase the heat uh, to cook with it. But while you're just learning and while you're just starting, it's best to start with a lower heat. What you're looking for is for the onions to become translucent and the garlic to become translucent, but not to start browning. If the garlic starts browning on you, you're cooking it too high or too fast, and it's gonna end up creating a bitter flavor in your fried rice. Okay, now that the peppers and the onions are, are almost done, as you can see, we're going to add the mushrooms in. Mushrooms cook very, very quickly, and so you don't want to leave them in too long because then they'll melt into it and, and they will lose their, their character and their texture. So once the mushrooms are in, just turn it very, very quickly, let them get coated. And then we're gonna build in the cold rice from the night before. It's very important that you let the rice cool. If the rice isn't cold or cooled before you put it in, it will clump up and it will actually start sticking to the pan. And what you wanna do is you wanna get it so that the rice uh, grains actually separate and become fluffy again. That's one of the joys of the dish. So here we have leftover rice from the day before. And we're gonna add about four cups. That's about four cups worth of fried rice and that'll be enough to feed four people for this dish. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix in the oil around and you're gonna break up the rice a little bit so that it starts to separate into individual grains. Once it starts heating up, what you're going to do is you're going to take the packet of Kikkoman Soy, the fried rice seasoning, and you're going to get it ready to go in. Okay, now the rice is getting coated and it's starting to flake up and, and absorb the vegetables. We'll take the packet of fried rice, and we're gonna sprinkle about half of the packet over the four cups. And then we're going to add a little bit of soy sauce, 
Um, and the soy sauce is to add a little bit of color, a little bit of flavor, and to loosen up the, the rice so that it can be fluffy and the grains separate. If you use about, I would say, a quarter of a cup and you put it in first to, to start it and then a little bit more to flavor it, season it, you're gonna have the right amount of, of, of soy sauce. I would go light because you can always add more, but don't be afraid of it. And now we're gonna add a little bit more soy. And you can see that the rice is soft and it's separating into individual grains, which is a sign of a, a really delicious, properly prepared fried rice. The last step is as it's getting hot, before it starts to, to catch and before it becomes a, a little bit more difficult to work with, we're going to take the, the egg and we're gonna add the egg that's already been fried up and scrambled to the rice. And by mixing it, it'll separate the egg into little pieces which will go relatively evenly through the dish, giving you little bites of egg that are fun to find and add flavor and a beautiful vibrancy to the dish. I'm gonna add just a little bit more soy sauce because the color is a little light. And I like my fried rice to be a nice, beautiful brown. And it's really the soy sauce that gives the, the fried rice the color. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the fried rice. Okay, so we have made the fried rice and it's ready to go. So now comes the really quick part of making this brunch. Most of the time when you're making French toast, you are thinking that you are making something absolutely wonderful, but the reality is that French toast was designed for you to reconstitute bread that has either become stale or unpalatable. In this case, we're cheating because we're using Hawaiian sweet rolls and there's no way for those to become unpalatable. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rolls, we put them in the freezer the night before. So now they're firm. Generally, they're very, very soft and, they, and they'll fold on you if you press into them. But by freezing them, you actually get a little bit of kickback from the rolls themselves. So we're gonna make breakfast for four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take four rolls. And they fold out quite nicely, nice and easy. So there we have four rolls. And what we're gonna do is once we have the four rolls, we're gonna cut them into four pieces per roll. This is a bread knife. It will cut through without tearing the bread up. And you wanna use a light touch so you don't smush the bread. But what you end up with is four little pieces that look like mini pieces of bread per roll. So we're gonna quickly do that and cut the rest of the, the rolls for this. Keep in mind that you want them to be as evenly, um, evenly cut as possible so that they fry about the same speed. If you have some that are very, very thin or some that are very, very thick, uh, it will cause them to come out at different times. Now that you've cut the bread, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna scramble up the eggs real quick. So what I've done is I've, I've got the eggs ready to go and I've got a side of water. We're gonna add a little bit of water to the eggs to make them fluffy. 
they don't sink into the, 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 the rolls. Generally speaking, you're gonna use one egg for every two rolls. So really, all you really need is to use two eggs. But what we're gonna do after this is we're gonna take the eggs and we're gonna scramble them up and serve them. So you can actually scramble all of the eggs at the same time because there won't be any waste. But if you're doing the toast by itself without doing the brunch, one egg will make two rolls generally. Now, generally speaking also, when you're adding water to the mix, you only need about an ounce or two. So we're gonna add the water to all the eggs and then we're gonna just scramble. And you can use a fork, you can use a wire whisk. Just make sure that you're blending them well so that all the yolks are broken and it comes into a, a singular color and texture. And the egg looks like it's done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pam the cooking surface real quick. And what we're gonna do is we're literally gonna dip and place. Dip and place. Dip, place. Dip. And you're gonna do this very, very quickly because within a few seconds, they're gonna be ready to be flipped. Now, while that's done, what you're going to do is the first one should be getting ready to be flipped and should be a nice light brown on the other side. If you can see, it really is a quick process. Now when I created this dish, I did it for my sister, Jen. And uh, it was mostly because Jen, for some reason, really thinks that tiny things are cute. You can use larger pieces of bread, but for the sake of the, the visual and the way it's presented on the plate, these little pieces are about the perfect size for what you're gonna do to present to guests. It only takes a minute or two, and in just a moment we're gonna pull them off and we're gonna put them on a plate. And you can see that they really do look absolutely attractive when they're cooked properly. Nice golden brown, a little crisp on the sides. Now the other nice thing about this is literally, uh, when you're done making the amount of rolls that you want, you can take the rolls that are left and put them right back into the freezer and they're ready for next time. So there's literally no waste and you don't have to worry about uh, things going bad on you. Okay, once they're done, the very next step is, is very quick. We're gonna just soft scramble the rest of the eggs. So scramble again. And what you wanna do is you just wanna keep it away from the, the drainage hole. And you just wanna give it enough time to fry up and become perfect scrambled eggs. Now once again, if you like your eggs soft and fluffy, you add a little bit of water to them. If you like your eggs creamy and rich, you add a little bit of milk, or you don't have to add anything at all to them. Okay, so we're gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna put the French toast back on to keep it warm. And we're gonna get ready to start plating. Are you ready? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go get the French, the fried, rice and then I'm going to bring it back and we're going to get ready to, to finish this. So the moment you have long been waiting for has finally arrived and what we're going to do is we're going to plate up the three different things that we've made and then we're going to put the cherry on top. We're going to make a mango mimosa. So first for plating, 
presentation wise, you just want it to look something appetizing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting the four pieces of French toast on the plate in an attractive manner. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of scrambled eggs and we're gonna take a scoop of the fried rice And then just to finish, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of powdered sugar. And then we're gonna take a little bit of shredded coconut. Maybe just a touch more. And then we're going to take the Coco Real, which is a coconut syrup. And we're literally gonna just drizzle a little bit over the top. So we've plated the plates and we are now ready to go, but there's only one thing missing and that is our mango mimosas. Now for the mango mimosas, all you really need is one bottle of a sparkling wine. In this case, we're using Andre's Brut and one can of Kern's Mango Nectar. What you're gonna do is shake the can and you're gonna pour a little bit into each glass. Doesn't have to be absolutely equal, but a little bit in each one, and then you're gonna top it off with the sparkling wine. Now it will foam, so you wanna give a little bit of time for the foam to go down before you try and top it off. And you are literally ready for brunch for four. The cost on these meals is about $4.75 with the mango mimosa put in. So it's very, very inexpensive. It takes a little bit of time and it doesn't create a lot of mess at all. It's kind of a, a nice way to treat guests that are coming to visit you. What we're gonna do now is we're going to divvy this out so that we all get a chance to have a little bit and we hope that you enjoyed your meal and your experience with us. Thanks for joining us at Fresh Food Therapy.